So this is David Tal. This is the Balagan Connection. And this is going to be an update of about what's going on in Israel. This is going to be a little bit longer, so stay with me. We're going to be talking about what's going on in Israel uh, today at this moment. Um, Israel is licking its wounds and, and kind of getting uh, itself reorganized. Uh, we'll talk about the preparation for what's going to happen. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit about uh, the American role in, in the international picture. And in the end, we'll talk about the war that is going to come, both on the ground and in the media, and who's going to be fighting for what and what your role is in this war. So stick through this. Uh, please do me a favor. Uh, like, subscribe. Uh, we need to get this word out, spread, spread this out, because there's so many lies going on. The deceiver is working overtime right now as we speak. And the only way to overcome the deceiver is with this kind of truth. So let's talk about what's going on in Israel right now. First of all, the rockets haven't stopped. Israel has reclosed its borders, but the rockets are still coming in from Gaza as we speak. In fact, five minutes ago, I just now got an indication on my phone. Now, the rockets are more or less intercepted by the Iron Dome, though some of them, some of them do, do get through. But that means that this is still a, a, a how do you say, shooting war. This is still a war that is, is being shot. Uh, in Gaza itself, uh, everybody is talking about a humanitarian crisis that is a result of Israel's bombing in Gaza. Uh, and there's a couple of things I want to make very, very clear about what Israel is doing in Gaza right now. No, okay, if they tell you it's a retaliation, that is false. If they tell you it's a genocide, that is false. By the way, if Israel wanted to wipe the Gazan people off the map, they could have. There are more Palestinians today than there ever were before. Israel is not genociding the Palestinians. If they tell you it's a revenge, it is not. If they tell you it's an occupation, Israel doesn't want to occupy the Gaza Strip. We have no reason to occupy the Gaza Strip. We don't want to. In fact, we moved out of the Gaza Strip in 2005. So all of that is false. What is true? It's a preparation for a ground offensive where Israel is going to go inside the area that we call the Northern Gaza Strip and rip the organization called Hamas that murdered babies, women, and old women, old women and children. I mean, we're going in to make sure that the Hamas will never do anything like this again. Our war is not with the Palestinian people. It's not with the people of Gaza. But... If the Hamas puts a military installation in the basement underneath a house in Gaza, that house becomes a target. Israel has told everybody to get out of there, has warned everybody that we are going after these targets. Okay, so if this is a relative military official legal target, then anybody who gets stays in that building is going to be part of the collateral damage. And here's the thing. Hamas knows that. We've told the people in Gaza to move out, but Hamas is holding its people back because it wants death by Israel to be part of the war that they're dealing with. But Israel is getting prepared now, but the whole country is going through, through a, a major shift. Um, we're still licking our wounds. The stories are horrific. The pictures that are coming out now. And, and here's the thing. We have videos that were captured after the, from the GoPros that were on the helmets of the terrorists. That actually shows them killing innocent people. That actually shows them beheading soldiers. We have their footage, not our footage. It's horrific in ways that we cannot understand. Israel is still in, in shock by the whole thing. We're in this reorganization. All the people in the area of Gaza have moved out. On the, on the people that live close to the border have moved out. So we've got to find accommodation for them. We've got to feed them. Um, you saw the video that I put up on Instagram a little bit about how we're feeding some of these people. I'm connected to two organizations that are deeply embedded in that. It is Gijon Springs that actually does all kinds of work with, with believing ministries here and mostly with Nitiva, which is actually supporting and helping soldiers all over the country. But we're, we're getting everything kind of prepared. We're, we're moving people around. And, and there's this feeling that, okay, 
it's coming soon. So that's the situation in the area. And yes, we need your support. We need your support to feed the people who have been kicked out of their homes and dress them and help them get organized. We need your support for the soldiers that are getting prepared to go into this, this war. And we need your support in the spiritual war that's going to come. A couple of words about the ground offensive. The ground offensive is going to start soon. There's a lot of people asking why it hasn't started yet. I have a feeling that there's American kind of mixture into this. Israel would have probably started the ground offensive a while ago, but there's a lot of motion, a lot of noise being made about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. I'm Israeli. There's 222 hostages in Gaza. Some of them nine months old. Some of them 90 years old. That's a humane, humane crisis. That is a humanitarian crisis. We haven't heard about them. We haven't seen them. You can see the pictures of them here behind me. I don't understand why the world is talking about a humanitarian crisis in Gaza, not talking about those 220 people, civilians that were taken out of their bedrooms by their hair, raped and put in basements inside Gaza. That is a humanitarian crisis. Nobody is dealing with that. The world is talking about the Palestinian humanitarian crisis, so food is now going in, okay? But Israel has stopped any kind of fuel because we're not going to fuel the enemy. But we know that this ground offensive is coming. So, so pray for these soldiers. Pray for these young men, young women that are getting ready for this. Pray for our leaders who have to make very, very serious decisions. That's part of the story. The northern side is still up in, in the air. And as of now, an all-out war between us and a terrorist organization that sits in Lebanon called the Hezbollah has not started, but the Hezbollah is pinpricking uh, uh, an anti-tank missile here, uh, an attack here. They're trying to keep us on our back foot. A lot of the forces that Israel has called up in preparation are now in the northern area, staring down the barrels of the Hamas rocket launchers and saying, stay out of this. Which brings us to another kind of story, because... All of this is instigated by Iran. We know that now. Iran with the Houthis. By the way, the Houthis fired a couple of rockets at Israel that were intercepted by an American destroyer in the Red Sea. But it's all coming together. There's a lot of tension. And this theoretically could break out from a war with Hamas and Gaza to a war with Lebanon, to a war with Iran, to a war with everything that goes on in the Middle East. And that is a much, much bigger scenario. Um, there are prophecy sites and, and pastors that you can talk about or open up the book of Revelation and you can see where some of that might go if this is the final act that we're talking about. So, so pray for us. Pray that we'll be able to keep the whole story uh, in Gaza as of now. We have support of your government that is actually staring down and saying don't let anybody get in. But we're not sure how much to trust other people. And I'm going to say maybe something else that you need to understand about what happened to us. Um, anybody who's been on a tour with me, anybody who's heard me speak about the history of Israel knows exactly what I'm talking about. We're Jewish. We're God's chosen people. We are God's kids, if you want to put it that way. We have been attacked, brutalized, murdered. We are kind of not surprised. We're kind of not surprised that this is happening to us. I mean, we were surprised that we thought that our enemy was becoming more realistic, pragmatic. They said they wanted to kill us, but they were actually arguing with us about how many people we allow into Israel to work in the weekends. That's, that's all for us. We'll, we'll deal with that, okay? But what I'm seeing going on all over the world uh, is, is horrific. Uh, gas the Jews in Australia. Uh, professors in, in the United States saying, I'm glad this happened. I mean, there is, again, a sense in, in our minds of, of this is a war against not just Israel. This is a war against Jews. This is a war against everything uh, that we hold dear. So what I'm asking you to do, if, if we can put this together, um, pray for us. Pray for what's going to happen. Teach yourself. And if you have questions that you want me to answer specifically, 
Okay, I'm going to start going in and answering specific questions. Write them down below. I now have a team of people that is going that are going through the comments and, and connecting to this. So if you have questions specific about what's going on, let's let's do that as much as possible. Pray for the young men and women uh, that are going into the army and getting are, are literally girding themselves for battle. Okay, pray for the international situation that will allow Israel to continue to take on Hamas and, and do what needs to be done to make sure that this will never be happen again with Israel. Support us. Send a message to anybody that you know who's Jewish who is going through PTSD now. Send a message to anybody that you know who is Israeli. Uh, support us uh, financially. Uh, Gijon Springs, there's a link down here, is doing a lot of good work. That's something that I'm connected to uh, with Nitiva and others. But there are a lot of organizations that are doing good work. And if you have questions, ask me or ask Gijon Springs on their website. They are connected to ministries and organizations in Israel. But more than anything, pray for us. Pray for God's chosen people who are being attacked again because they're God's chosen people. This is David Tal. This is the Balagan Connection. This is Israel in October 23rd. And um, get ready because you are going to have to take a stand. You are going to have, like the Bible says, stand in the gap, stand in the gap for the attack on God's chosen people today. By the way, I will go back to talking about false and true, but you understand that truth is godliness and lies are the deceiver. This is a war about much more than just Israel and Hamas. David Tal, the Balagan Connection, pray for us, and I hope to see you here soon.